Hello, in this video we are going to be looking at the Marksman class in King Arthur Knight's Tale. Now, we are in a very unusual place because we are in the crypt looking at Lady Dindrain. And the reason for that is I only have one ranger who's alive. His name is Sir Gerind. All my other rangers are in the crypt. Some of them died during missions, but there was a patch which introduced a bug that put some of my rangers in the crypt on all my saves. So not only on like one saved game state, all my saves have Lady Dindrain in the crypt. So that's why, and I don't know, I, I don't know how to use cheat engine to pull a, that there is a, um, an item in the game that you can use to resurrect dead um, heroes. I don't know how, how to pull that. So I'm just forced to look at her skill set in the crypt and she's like the most iconic, probably one of the most iconic marksmen in the game. So she's a good example to use to overview the entire class. So the marksman is your standard ranger archetype in the game. Their role is to deal damage from ranged attacks. They have good mobility. They are fairly squishy, but against ranged attacks, they actually have a lot of tools to be able to either avoid or reduce damage coming from ranged attacks. In my opinion, they are probably the worst class in the game because their damage output is fairly low compared to every other class. They don't have much to offer other than the damage. That's all they do really. They just do damage and, and damage is low. So most of the time they don't have any crowd control spells or if they do, they only have one. And you know, it's not like, it's not as good as with Arcanists, for example, or, or, or Sages. They do have a lot of damage skills, but their damage output is, is fairly low compared with other classes. And the biggest problem of this class is that they lack AOE damage. So they are very bad against group, groups of enemies, which honestly is 90%, not like 90 to 95% of, of your fights in this game. Like more than 90% of, of your encounters are going to be against large groups of enemies. And then the marksman has absolutely nothing to offer in terms of, of AOE. Well, they do have some, they do have some skills like this poison bomb, which you get very late in the game, uh, with Lady Din Drain, which is an AOE, um, AOE skill. But other than that, they just, they just really lack. So in terms of items, the marksman can wear light armor. So you can see here that it gives some protection, but compared to heavy armor and medium armor, this is obviously the least amount of protection you can get from, from, um, from an armor sigil in the game. Then you got rune for ranged weapons. So that's a pretty obvious one. The runes will try to give them that extra damage that they lack with their skills, but it's just it's just never enough. So this weapon is pretty good on Lady Dindrain, Bolt of Death. It gives her plus 15% chance to deal double damage, which is great. Plus one AP, eight damage for one turn after using a movement skill. And Marksman have plenty of movement skills. And she also gets plus eight damage for area attacks, which she doesn't have that many of. So that's maybe not that useful, but generally these weapons are not bad. It's just, it's just that everything else is lacking. And then other items like relics, jewelry, they will also give you either extra range or extra damage. So extra damage from behind cover. So that's another thing that's, so that's another thing that rangers do pretty well. And if you do, you will either be completely protected from ranged attacks or you will take reduced damage from range, range attacks. But most marksmen, when they are behind cover, they will have skills and items that will allow them to deal increased damage. And when it comes to the important stats, obviously your vitality, hit points and armor are going to be fairly low because of that light armor marksmen are going to be squishy. Weapon damage is going to be the most important stat. Obviously you want to deal damage. Like I said, there isn't much more in the kit that you can do. So you, you just want to focus on dealing as much damage as possible. Armor breaking again, helps with, helps with, with damage. So that's a good stat to have. There will be some skills that will help you bypass armor, but having armor breaking high is, is generally pretty good. And then I would say perception is also a good one one to have because marksmen have a lot of mobility so you can move around the 
the, the map, the area, you will try to kite enemies when possible. If you are approached by one or two enemies, you will try to kite them. So you don't really want to walk into a trap or something like that. So having that perception at one or two could help you uh, detect hidden units, for example. So in terms of skills that most marksmen share, we're going to start with shoot. This is just a standard weapon attack dealing 100% weapon damage, AP cost is 4, range is 11. This is a skill that, that all marksmen will have. And then you can upgrade it to deal increased damage against burning or poisoned units, which is usually good because you will have a way to poison enemies or set them on fire. Some marksmen will have both. Some of them will only have one of these skills. And there is always someone in your party who can set enemies on fire or poison them so most of the time you will benefit from these increased um, damage upgrades you can upgrade it to gain some armor piercing so like i said you want armor breaking when possible but some of your skills will have armor piercing and then you can in uh, reduce the cooldown by one turn then we have poisoned arrow another common skill amongst marksman so this is a ranged attack that deals standard weapon damage and it also poisons the enemy for two turns and a poisoned enemy suffers 10 percent damage at the start of their turn and deals 20 percent less damage so it's just a better shoot right it's it deals the same amount of damage but it also poisons the enemy with your other skills and items you can reduce the cooldown to one turn so you can pretty much use it instead of this we uh, and you can even as you can see here i've got the ap cost is three and with shoot is four yeah you can use it every round obviously you may have enough ability points to use both so once you so you can use this twice you won't be able to use this twice but not, not nonetheless with all the upgrades you will be able to use it every uh, every turn so you can upgrade it to increase the poison du poison effects duration by one turn increase the damage obviously very important you can change it so it applies vulnerability you can do this upgrade poison blast if the target is killed units within two tiles get poisoned right so that's an attempt to compensate for lack of aoe but in this case it's just it's just not gonna be enough so that's an okay skill the only problem here is that a lot of enemies will be like undead and they are immune to poison so it's not always gonna be useful the next skill is fire arrow it's a ranged attack that deals 70 percent weapon damage and causes burning an enemy that's burning suffer uh, they suffer 40 percent damage at the start of their turn so overall it's 70% weapon damage, so a bit lower than the previous two skills, but over time you're going to deal more damage because at the, at the start of their turn they will suffer 40% damage, so that's already 110, and then if they survive to another turn they will suffer another 40%, so that's 150% in total. And then you can upgrade it to so that burning units gain less uh, one less AP. You can change the duration of fire arrows burning effect uh, to increase it by one turn. You can get plus 50% weapon damage, a pretty obvious upgrade. And then you can do explosive arrow, so similar to this poison blast, fire arrow causes burning to every adjacent unit within the target so this one is a bit better because this one was after a kill and this one and this one just comes as soon as you fire your your uh your fire arrow okay another common skill is scout the hero detects enemy traps from a number of tiles range equal to the hero's perception the hero gains one movement ap each turn plus one perception so that's why i said perception can be good for the marksman class because it will allow you to see hidden units and detect traps and you also get some extra movement which you will have plenty of when using the marksman class so here the upgrades are you can get some extra movement uh, you can receive less damage from range attacks then we have on the run the hero gains plus one ap at the start of their turn if five or more AP was spent on movement in the previous turn. And then you've got first dodge. So the first ranged hit the hero receives in each encounter is automatically dodged. So like I said, there are ways to reduce damage from ranged attacks. But there are also ways to completely avoid damage from ranged attacks. Obviously, it's only for the first hit in this case. Okay, next we have aimed shot. This skill is also very common amongst um, the marksmen. So it's a ranged attack that... Um, 
with 18 armor piercing that consume that consumes all remaining AP and it deals 20% 25% weapon damage per AP spent and also the amount of armor piercing is increased by one every two levels so essentially this is a, a better shoot because with 4 AP you're dealing 100% weapon damage so so equal to shoot but you are piercing through 18 armor plus one every two levels additionally so it's just a better it's a it's just a better shoot but it has a cooldown of three turns and it also doesn't have some of these upgrades so in terms of upgrades you can have fast aim the hero gains two movement when killing a unit with aim shot direct hit plus 20 percent weapon damage against unarmored units and then you can increase the range by two tiles and you can upgrade it so it can't be blocked so it's slightly better but overall I just found it very underwhelming, just like the entire Marksman class, to be honest with you. But yeah, it's 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 good to have, I guess. Then we have Dash. Um, pretty much every Marksman will have that skill. So it's a quick movement in a straight line. The hero becomes immune to opportunity attacks while dashing. So this is your main tool to disengage. So because you're so squishy, once an enemy approaches you, you are unable to move away from that enemy without getting hit by attacks of opportunity. So this skill is very good because number one, it allows you to ignore attacks of opportunity and number two, it allows you to disengage for uh, to a distance of up to five tiles. And the AP cost is very low because it only costs one AP. The biggest problem is, is the long cooldown, which is three turns, but still... For a disengagement tool, it's pretty, pretty good. And the upgrades here are Keen Eye, decrease the AP cost of Overwatch by one after dashing. Sprint, dash AP cost is reduced by one. So normally it's two, but I reduce it to one. And the range of dash is, in is increased by two tiles. And the final upgrade, you can reduce the cooldown by one turn. So that should help. But again, you really need to invest in damage skills. So you won't be able to afford put it, uh, to put too much here. Then we've got Alchemist, so this will be all the marksmen who have Poisoned Arrow will have that. So this decreases the AP cost of skills causing poison by one. And it has plenty of other upgrades that increase your damage against poisoned units. So for example, this one here, units affected by poison lose two armor at the start of each of their turns. So this combined with Poison Arrow is pretty strong against enemies who can actually be poisoned. And like I said, a lot of enemies in the game are immune to poison. Then we have Poison Bomb, which I've also seen on a couple of marksmen. So this is the, the lacking AOE damage, which only comes late in the game. So this is an area attack that deals 70% weapon damage in an area of three times three tiles. The range is good because it's between two and 11 tiles. The AP cost is good, it's only three, and the cooldown is, uh, is three turns. So this is a pretty good skill, but it's just not enough. And, and compared to some other AOE skills, especially when compared against Arcanists or even champions, like this skill is just, poor it's just it's nothing special it's okay but once you start comparing it against other aoe skills it's not gonna look that good anymore and you can upgrade it so it can co it causes poison for two turns you can increase the weapon damage by 15 percent uh, you can upgrade it so unit hits by poison bomb lose armor and then you can reduce the ap cost by one so normally it's four then we have Cover Expert and Long Reach. So Cover Expert gives you plus one tiles range for all skills used from cover. So again, firing from cover is something you want to do when you play this class because it will increase your damage, it will increase your range and it will give you protection from ranged attacks. You can upgrade it to get 10% weapon damage, extra weapon damage from cover. You can get some physical debuff resist while in cover, you can get some unbreakable armor and you can further reduce the damage taken uh, while in cover by 10%. And long reach, it gives you plus one range for all attacks and some upgrades here are also pretty good. Plus 10 weapon damage against units or at least six tiles away. Plus one uh, tiles range for skills when the hero is at maximum AP. 10% weapon damage while the hero is disengaged. 
and 25% weapon damage for the first attack in the encounter. So most of the time you want to be disengaged. If you're not disengaged, you're going to be dead uh, as marksman. So that's a pretty obvious choice. Then we have scout here again. So plus one movement HP each turn and plus one perception. Evasion, dodge the first incoming melee attack each turn. Very good. It can really save you um, sometimes when you let enemies approach. And sometimes you just you just can't stop them because there will be too many. So this can really save your life. And then we've got this skill, which is called Hunter. AP cost of all skills is reduced by one while only one enemy is present in the encounter, which is probably like three fights in the entire game out of like more than 100. So not that great, unless there is only one enemy left because everybody's dead. But if everybody else is dead, what difference does it make? And then there will also be some passive skills like Fire Shot, which will give you weapon damage for the first attack on each turn if no AP was spent in that turn. Uh, Pyromania will, will be um, there for those marksmen that have Fire Arrow to increase their burning damage. Deflection, which will allow you to reduce damage taken from ranged attacks. Adrenaline. You gain 1 AP when killing a unit. Ready, plus 20% Overwatch damage. I Maybe I should have used Overwatch a bit more with this class. I just never used it. I never used it that much. And I think that's it when it comes to common skills. I think most Rangers are fairly similar. So if we look at Sir Geraint here, he has all those skills that we mentioned. So he's, he's got Poison Bomb, Cover Expert, Long Reach, Evasion, Scout, Hunter, He's got Alchemist because he has Poison Arrow. He's got Ready, Adrenaline and Deflection, Scout, Shoot. So the only difference here for him is that he doesn't have those Fire Attacks. He doesn't have Fire Arrow, he doesn't have Aimed Shot, and obviously he doesn't have the skills like Pyromania that increase fire damage because it will be useless for him. So let's look at the skills that he's got instead. He's got Ice Shield. Three Ice Plates start orbiting the hero for three turns for the duration. Each Ice Plate can fully negate one incoming hit. So he's like, he's one of those more defensive marksmen. Um, this is actually pretty good because it allows you to fully negate three hits, which is very powerful. So I can't really complain about this skill. But on a ranged character, it's not that great. But hey, if you get caught, it can save your life. You can reduce the cooldown by one turn. You can increase the duration by one turn. You can reduce the AP cost by one and then you can upgrade it so it creates one additional ice plate. And then he also has this skill, Lightning Arrow, a ranged attack that deals 100% weapon damage to the target and 50% weapon damage to the, to the two enemies closest to them within two um, tiles range. So this is another attempt to try and give a marksman an AoE kind of kind of AoE attack, but it's just it's just poor. 50% weapon damage to two enemies, and they have to be within two tiles range. With an AP cost of six, it's just so bad. It's, yeah, it's, it's not very good. And then he's got Master Alchemist. Po potion effects on the hero are increased by 50%, but you can only drink, like, two poison, uh, two, two poisons, two potions on each uh, mission. So, and, and you normally they're gonna be enough these effects are gonna be enough so not that great and i think that's it i think i also have sir evane here so you can see same pattern here so he doesn't have poison arrow he's got fire arrow instead so he's got pyromania he also has piercing shot a uh, ranged attack that deals 70 percent weapon damage to every unit in a straight line so again like a Poor attempt to give uh, a, a marksman an a uh, like an AOE attack that can attack multiple enemies. They have to be in a straight line. The weapon damage is only 75%. And he's got some skills here that allow him to do more damage against um, targets with uh, low vitality. But other than that, it's just not that great. He's just not that great. So... Um, yeah, that was the summary of the Marksman class in King Arthur Night Cell. I wish I could say more about this class, but they are really fairly similar and, to be honest, fairly weak. I mean, it's a cool class if you like that Ranger archetype. I often took Lady Dindrain for missions. You can see I even gave her three permanent upgrades before she was taken away by that patch. So it's not like I didn't use uh, Marksman. I did. But it's just compared to other classes, they really lack, especially when it came to, to doing 
some serious damage to enemies, which on higher dif difficulties is definitely needed. Okay, so that was the overview of the Marksman class in King Arthur Knight's Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.